Uh, welcome to the Venia Legendi Lectures uh, series organized by School of Governance, Law and Society of Tallinn University. I am uh, Tony Sartz, head of the Evaluation Committee, Associate Professor of Comparative Politics. And today we will have actually two uh, lectures and the first one will be given by Katri Taht, uh, who, who is uh, uh, a candidate to the tenure track position in Professor of Sociology of Work and Education. So please, uh, Katri, the floor is, is yours. And then we are going to have a lecture for 45 minutes or so, and after that, you can ask the questions. We are going to have a Q and A session. But first, the lecture. Okay, thank you. I uh, hope you can hear me fine. Yeah. So, if anything, uh, let me know. And uh, um, regarding questions, um, if you feel like you need a clarification in the middle, I don't mind. You can also ask in the middle. Um, you can write in chat, but I kind of promise that I can follow the chat. So if there is anything urgent, somebody can just speak up. Uh, usually I, I'm not disturbed uh, with the questions during the presentation. Okay, uh, so uh, let me um, put off my camera just in case. And this way, this terms. Let us. Okay. So, um, uh, welcome to everybody, and thanks for joining the my presentation. Um, when I was given um, instructions about the um, oh, the slides are not changing. Okay, now. Um, that what should I talk about? Um, then uh, one of the indications was that they should about my research uh, during the last five years. And um, then I was looking at the projects where I've been participating and the research what I've been doing. Um, and, uh, and then I decided to talk about uh, young adults um, in the early career in Estonia. Uh, but of course, I worked on, uh, on different issues, but uh, very much related to the labor market. Um, issues and um, and young people have been not the main focus or the the only focus of these projects but also part of it depending on the project uh, so um uh, the presentation uh, well yeah so the my main lines of research uh, over these last years have been uh, on social inequality and the labor market processes um, so i have looked at the school to work transitions of maybe earlier years uh, recent years more up on I looked at labor market uh, transitions um, inside the labor market um, and uh, how it's um, affected by gender or age or education inequalities uh, then we are ongoing one big project about gender pay gap um, where we looked at uh, pay differences and try to explain it and also pro propose some solutions to reduce this gender wage gap in Estonia. Uh, and also, I've been always um, trying to include in my work also the impact or trying to measure or to assess the impact of institutions on uh, labor market processes. Um, so, I mean, starting from the education um, institution, but uh, also more general, um, talking about the welfare regimes or uh, labor market institutions. And another stream of work uh, has been more work on family life. Um, of course, it's related to the labor market, but bringing in also the, the private uh, sphere and how they those things work together. Um, and there I had one a bigger project on uh, working time uh, and also time use in general. And uh, and there we looked at how uh, looked at household time and time devoted to children and also on education choices, um, and also looking at the, how the time use um, in the households and the inequality in time use also um, accumulates also in the labor market and how those things are related. So maybe those who are um, disadvantaged situation in the labor market, they are also disadvantaged situation in terms of household division labor in the households. 
and how those things go together. Um, and the earlier years, I also have looked how the time use affects the family cohesion, um, but this was more of my uh, PhD project. Uh, so um, today, when uh, preparing this lecture, I was thinking what uh, should I present or what results from my, um, my from the last year's uh, research. And I, I took uh, two papers where it will be the most um, results that I present uh, today. So for those who already know my work, for them also maybe something new, because one paper is not published yet, it's, uh, it's uh, forthcoming, and the other was published uh, last year. Um, and there is also, and so as I said, the focus here is really on the, on the youth uh, or the young people. And I put the main focus in Estonia, although most of the projects where I've been working on are international comparative projects. So what I wanted to make an uh, extract uh, and focusing only on the, on the situation of Estonia. Um, so just a, a quick outline of the presentation. So first, just I talk a little bit why we should uh, look at the early careers and why is it important. More, it's more a sum up of uh, previous findings. Uh, uh, then I give a quick overview about the labor market situation of young adults in Estonia. Um, slide also referring to the EU context of where we are compared to other EU countries, but the main focus is on Estonia. So I don't go too much into comparative uh, research and comparative findings here. And then I will present some empirical evidence um, about labor market exclusion of young adults in Estonia and its midterm consequences. Um, and this is based on those two research papers. Uh, there is more research, but I thought it's just too many things. So if you want to know more, and then just feel free to ask. Um, so why should we care about early careers? Um, um, what we already know and what has been studied and showed um, quite a lot, that recent school leavers experience um, um, uh, more, um, I think the slides were not changing, right? Um, now it is. Um, recent school leavers experience more disadvantage on the labor market um, than prime age workers, and um, they are more likely experiencing labor market exclusion or labor market instability, like unemployment or being in need situation, meaning that not in education or employment or training. And those unfavorable experiences in the labor market uh, in one's early career um, can leave negat to negative uh, consequences um, in economic, financial, psychological or uh, social aspects of the life of these young people. Um, as we have seen from other studies, for example, just to give some few examples, that labor market exclusion may result in insecure and poor prospects of future employment and lower earnings. And this is uh, something that I'm gonna present also later um, in this presentation. Uh, we also know about how unemployment experiences or early labor market in insecurities uh, can have an impact on mental and physical uh, health issues, but also general well-being. Um, um, I have one paper on that also, um, uh, about European comparison uh, about the youth well-being um, and the effect of early labor market uh, insecurities on that, um, but I'm not going to talk about it today. Um, and then the costs of the early uh, labor market insecurity have not been pointed out only that the cost is on individual level for those young people themselves, but also on the social level. Uh, meaning for the society, uh, having um, um, quite many people who are maybe not so well off in the labor market, uh, and um, but also the costs of having people who are not in the employment uh, or on social benefits. Um, so it's also an important um, issue when it comes to early careers. And, and those are the main arguments, Or but there are more examples and more research, of course, how early careers uh, and development of early careers can affect uh, uh, young adults. Um, um, 
maybe something to point out here still is also the the effect of the of the their own life choices of the young uh, people that uh, experiencing insecurity in early careers uh, starts affecting the next life choices like for example family formation which is also very much a studied field um so when we look at the general trends in the um regarding the youth uh, uh, labor market situation um we can see that they are almost in all countries in a more disadvantaged situation for example we looked at unemployment uh, rates of uh, uh, of young adults and and uh, and the rest of the labor market participants we can see that the young adults experience much higher risks of unemployment and this is quite universal across the european countries when we look for example at the eu countries uh, however we can also see quite a variability across the countries um, in some countries uh, um, young adults may experience labor market insecurities um, in the early stage uh, but it doesn't affect their life later so it's kind of like a stepping stone they enter the labor market and they uh, they even despite experiencing the early labor market insecurities uh, it doesn't affect their careers or their incomes uh, later much uh, but there are other countries um, maybe more southern european countries often point out where um, uh, getting uh, or entering labor market is a really big challenge for young people so there is a very early insider outsider uh, divide and um, and it's very important also to to get yourself established quite early in the labor market because uh, if you do it during a certain period of time there is very high chance that you you will you'll be uh, scarred for very long or throughout your career um, because of uh, that and also we can see also different uh, type of divide between the countries uh, in countries maybe the young adults experience early labor market insecurities uh, but this doesn't bring them uh, very big social consequences or they are still able to to proceed with the rest of the life plans uh, for example i think the nordic countries and sweden have been given as an example that uh, experiencing early unemployment doesn't uh, affect much the plans of moving out of the parents the parental home or uh, postponing for example entry to parenthood where is some other countries uh, like southern europe again where the the social uh, protection is uh, much lower and the young people maybe depend much more on the family background and the family resources um, where early stage insecurity also starts affecting the, the next life choices. So there is a lot of variability between the countries, although we can also point out still some um, general trends. Uh, when we look at Estonia, Estonia in terms of the unemployment um, uh, rate, or youth unemployment rate is um, kind of below a European average and has been there um, most of the time when we look historically back um, so in that sense compared to other european countries you could say that the young people in estonia are doing maybe a little bit better um, but it has not always been like this and it's not in every uh, situation or every moment of time um, meaning that uh, the young people still form part of the general labor market and are affected very much about um, about what is going on in the labor market. Um, so, uh, for example, the last, uh, but, and uh, I mean, I think especially in the situations of labor market crises, uh, the vulnerability of young adults comes out uh, uh, clearer. Uh, when we look at the last uh, uh, economic crisis of 2008 and nine, the financial crisis, um, uh, we could see that uh, when the general unemployment rates went up, then for the youth, the unemployment rates went up much faster and, and has taken longer to recover. Um, also, when we look at the European uh, comparisons here, uh, pulled together all the European countries, just looking at the, at the time uh, effect. Uh, 
But uh, of course, there is also variability between the countries here. For example, you look at Germany, uh, there the effect of the crisis on the youth, we could hardly see any effect. But when we look at Estonia, uh, then we could see that it was a dramatic increase in the unemployment and especially youth unemployment. Uh, and in one moment, uh, Estonia had the highest youth unemployment rate in Europe um, as a reaction to this crisis. Uh, which also indicates something about the Estonian labor market that is very um, open economy and small economy, so it's and it's also very vulnerable of the external um, excesses. Um, however, the situation stabilized quite quickly, uh, and the unemployment rate started um, going down down again. Um, and stabilized in a sense, but what we can still see that uh, it never came back to where it was for young uh, adults and still slightly higher, um, which means that, um, um, that that there are still the presence of barriers of youth entering into the labor market in Estonia. They are experiencing higher unemployment rates than the, the, the rest of the or the main um, labor market thing, the, the, the prime age group of the labor market um, and, uh, and the difference has stayed uh, bigger than it was before the crisis. So maybe some few more words about uh, Estonian labor market uh, characteristics, what helps to understand the youth uh, labor market situation in Estonia. Um, uh, first of all, uh, the involvement of upper secondary level students in vocational training is low compared to uh, other uh, Central European countries, uh, uh, meaning that uh, many young adults in Estonia, they stay with the, uh, with the general education uh, or then they try to go to university and uh, vocational training is not so popular. Um, and this character is in general also the the uh, school to um, school and work uh, attachment um, uh, meaning that our education system and, and labor market are relatively detached from each other uh, there is no clear transition from school to a labor market for example like countries like germany or where the tracking starts very early and uh, there is quite smooth transition to the labor market um, Estonia, which means that the young people, of course, here are um, somewhat vulnerable situation, that uh, um, they are much more exposed to the labor market insecurities, um, but also means that what we can observe and we can see also in uh, previous studies, uh, and this is what I have done, uh, that um, in Estonia, maybe enter when entering the labor market, uh, there is a clear divide between having higher education and not having higher education. So higher educated young people have uh, much better chances to enter the labor market. Uh, and when looking from the employer side, we can see also they are not so much maybe looking at the, um, at the what the young people have studied and how good grades they have, but really it's important that they have higher education. And there was, we could even see the preference for certain educations, uh, like certain universities, which are kind of more popular or considered by employers, uh, the kind of the right or trustable universities. Um, so um, when looking at the employment protection, um, Estonia it has been ranked kind of uh, above OECD average um, in terms of protection, but uh, it, this is not always the case in practice. Um, uh, for example, the one of the main indicators of the labor market insecurity is when looking at the temporary contracts. This is kind of phenomenon which hardly exists in Estonian society or in labor market. Uh, all people have like undefined end contracts, but this type of contract doesn't give you much security in a sense that is easy to fire. Um, so, um, so maybe this protection looks um, in theory or in the regulation level higher than it is often in the practice. And uh, regarding the welfare regime, Estonia has been usually classified as liberal welfare regime, meaning that low uh, protection, 
uh, welfare protection, uh, when we look at the unemployment um, benefit uh, scheme that we have an unemployment insurance system, which means, of course, that is related to the previous employment. And there, of course, young adults are in a much more vulnerable situation uh, because they have not accumulated enough um, labor market experience and to benefit from this system. So they are often ending up in the unemployment uh, benefit, uh, which are rather low. And uh, neither can we see any or just very limited uh, youth targeted uh, employment policies or other type of policies, for example, housing policies, what would allow young people to have a, a smoother uh, um, uh, transition into independency, like moving, for example, moving out of parental home. So the institutional context does not really provide much support um, or protection for young adults entering into the labor market, uh, which means, of course, that the, their own resources uh, become relevant, the uh, earlier accumulated labor market experience, education, and also family background, uh, which is maybe not so um, much studied in the context of the labor market, uh, but has been studied uh, already quite a lot uh, in terms of the educational attainment and, and pointing to the increasing inequalities in the educational attainment and also related to the, um, uh, the social background. Um, so the main cleavage is uh, um, in, the, in terms of the labor market uh, insecurity in Estonia are kind of also the same as in many other countries. Um, what we can see in Estonia, of course, there is big difference uh, by education level. When we, for example, look at the unemployment rate, we can see that uh, and those um, who have um, gained attained higher education, which is the third level, they is get the scale. Um, their unemployment um, uh, risks are much uh, lower. They experience little unemployment um, and they often also get out of it uh, uh, faster whereas those in the first or second level um, which is like the basic education or then second is also vocational training um, experiencing much higher unemployment um, risks uh, of course it's related very much also to the economic cycle uh, and, uh, and the reaction of, to the crisis, we could see that it really came from the lower uh, level jobs and which was also partly the character of this crisis for it affecting, affecting jobs uh, like the men's jobs and the construction works where many uh, low educated and uneducated young people also were working. Um, the other cliche um, what has been pointed out and is often shown is the long-term unemployment, um, which is characteristic also to um, early career paths. So uh, is uh, that having experienced unemployment during the early career um, often ends up with long-term unemployment. Um, for example, in 2010, when the unemployment rate was really uh, high, uh, we could see almost half of those uh, young people were unemployed more than a year. So experiencing very really long um, unemployment. Um, um, uh, the unemployment rate, of course, the long-term unemployment goes uh, along with, uh, with the rest of the labor market processes when the labor market becomes a little bit easier and then also the uh, long-term unemployment, especially for young adults, also is going down. Uh, but especially in the in the in the more um, turbulent phases of periods, we can see that young people um, take a big toll from these uh, labor market insecurities. Um, another clear divide uh, in case of Estonia and also comes to the youth uh, labor market is uh, um, is ethnicity. Uh, I didn't put any uh, slides here on this, but uh, there is a clear difference between Estonians and non-Estonians. For example, when we look at the, at the need or the unemployed, uh, the unemployment rate for uh, non-Estonian uh, youth is almost a double than, uh, than this of the Estonian. Um, and as I said, also the effect of social origin um, 
has been pointed out, but this may be more in the context of, of the educational attainment than not so much in the in the labor market. Where the young people have already done the transition. But of course, through the education attainment, it also at one point consolidated this inequality is consolidated in the labor market. Um, so one area maybe which is less studied and um, and where I want to, I, I was thinking to present some findings um, of my recent research here is about labor market exclusion and care. Um, so as I already pointed out earlier, and it's also known from the previous uh, research is that um, um, early care career insecurities may lead to postponement um, of other um, um, personal life events like such family planning, moving out of the parental home, having children, for, uh, family formation or partnership formation. And when we look at the situation of young adults in Estonia in this uh, respect, um, we see that Estonian young people despite the labor market insecurities, uh, tend to move out of the parental home um, rather earlier and then later, especially compared to maybe Southern European countries, but not as, er as early as the uh, Scandinavian countries. Um, one paper, which I have not, which I'm not presenting here, but is work in progress, um, uh, where we looked at the, how unemployment experience is affecting the, the, the timing or the moving out of the parental home and indeed in case of Estonia there is no direct um, significant effect of for example exp experiencing unemployment that it would uh, make a difference for a time when you move out of the parental home however when you go more into detail you can see that uh, the differences come when we start taking into account also the parental resources so maybe those uh, who have more support from their parents um, um, are more likely to stay maybe home later, uh, enjoy this stability what they get from the from the parents' uh, side, and uh, and often younger people who are in a more vulnerable uh, labor market situation already and a social situation they are still leaving earlier and uh, and this is also something to maybe to study more and what we have looked at also that and this one the point of the accumulation of disadvantages that young. Uh, uh, people who have uh, less support of the family, they are entering the labor market earlier and being on their own and of course experiencing all the insecurities there in an even stronger way. And there are often people who don't end up in the higher education, so not having the, 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 the typical uh, safety net um, around them. Um, when we look at the entry into first parenthood, uh, or the parenthood, um, of course, like in most of the countries, also Estonia happens during the period of the establishing yourself in the labor market. Um, um, the mean age for Estonians to have the first uh, child in 2019 was 28 years. Um, uh, and 2015 was 27. There was in a short, relatively short period of time was an increase of one year, which is, was the highest increase across the whole European countries, which means that the, the first, first birth is postponed. Uh, still, you can see that the, a lot of young people, of course, have the first child on, and the, the, the impact that the challenge is related to this um, and their establishment in the labor market um, in their early 20s or in the first half of the 20s or the mid 20s. Um, and, uh, and of course, then it raises the issue, uh, um, how does this affect their, uh, the, the early careers? Um, what we have, of course, seen from the previous studies, and we know that uh, uh, what becomes very important uh, in this situation, especially for women's labor market participation, is the availability of care which has shown that uh, not having the, um, the care support uh, leaves especially uh, young women out of the labor market um, and uh, having early, uh, early formal care is uh, one of the relevant preconditions uh, for participation in the labor market 
when we look at the Estonian situation, there is public childcare available and is accessible and is highly used um, compared to uh, many other countries. However, um, what we can also observe is a clear um, childcare cap. Um, uh, for those who are not familiar with the Estonian labor market or this um, care um, regulation, um, the so-called paid parental leave lasts until the age of 1.5 for the kids, when the kid is year and a half. Uh, and this is when you are getting also the right to um, for a daycare, public daycare place. Uh, but uh, most kids, um, I mean, when we look at the uh, children three and uh, and above, uh, then the majority of kids are attending daycare and they attend actually so-called full-time. Um, I mean, the highest, one of the highest mean number of um, hours during the week spent in a daycare in Estonia. It's more than 90% of the children go, but uh, between one and five years and, and three years, uh, the Although then there is a kind of legal entitlement for this place, um, the, the participation for kids is rather low, com also compared to, to other European countries, um, uh, which uh, indicates uh, on one hand uh, the lack of uh, these very early care facilities, and of course on the other hand uh, still maybe the the mentality that uh, that. Uh, that parents or women or mothers should stay home with the kids until they are three years old. This is changing, has changed considerably uh, over the last years um, of the case, especially with the introduction of the, of the paid parental leave, which really forces uh, people or encourages people to enter uh, to the labor market after one and a half years uh, being in the break. Still, it creates quite long um, care breaks um, compared to other countries. Uh, and next to formal care arrangements, of course, informal care arrangements are also important. Um, uh, of course, not so much present, especially uh, given the high um, in numbers in terms of the hours of use of, of uh, formal care. But um, when looking at the Estonian time use survey, um, uh, I was looking at, um, at what is the effect of uh, using um, formal and also informal uh, care arrangements on the labor market participation of young adults. Um, it's not uh, really the perfect data to study the labor market participation, but it gives um, um, good information about how much care is used and moreover, um, what type of care is used. Um, and there I looked at the young uh, adults, um, 18 to 34, and we look at the what is the effect of having um, uh, a child and also the effect of uh, using childcare facilities on the labor market participation, the, the chances or risk that they are unemployed or, or they are inactive. Um, and of course, what we can see, there is a clear um, relationship between the um, a labor market participation and early care, uh, especially women, they they leave the labor market after the birth of a child, and it takes them uh, kind of three and slightly over three years to recover the labor market position. Whereas the father's uh, participation is affected very little uh, by the birth of child. Um, and uh, of course, parallel to mothers return the labor market goes to the use of the childcare, um, and uh, mostly the the formal childcare. Um, and by age three, most kids go to daycare already, and uh, and they are there considerable amount of hours. Uh, I think on average thirty seven hours a week, if I remember it right. Uh, but informal care is still uh, also important. Um, of course, in terms of hours, not so much, uh, but it's still relevant, especially when you look in the very beginning uh, of the um, of the first year when the child is born, uh, that the the, uh, the grand, especially grandparents' participation in the in the care is important, and and indicating that uh, also for the mothers uh, to return to labor market, especially when the public care is still 
quite restricted and is not always available, then the grandparent care is, uh, is important. Uh, when we look at the use of the childcare, how it affects the labor market participation, um, we don't see any association between the um, unemployment um, and uh, care use, which is partly uh, didn't surprise uh, me too much, meaning that uh, as uh, the care facilities are quite accessible, uh, the kids will probably go to take care uh, despite the parents being employed, unemployed. So we maybe don't see so much of a trend that people become unemployed, they stay home to start taking care of children. Uh, but we can see, of course, a really clear association between uh, the inactivity. And, and uh, when we dig more into it, we can see that especially it's for women and that women spend considerable time of their, especially in the early careers in the uh, taking care of children and the career breaks are long uh, and um, and there the, the availability of care is very important uh, not only the formal care but also informal care which is uh, uh, in a situation of Estonia where the coverage and the use of formal care availability is considered high the, the kindergarten quality is considered very high and uh, we can see that the informal arrangements still are very important. Um, and of course, uh, the informal care becomes specially relevant uh, in a uh, specific uh, labor market situation, which is often characterizing also young uh, uh, people, um, uh, low qualified uh, um, people, lower education and working low qualified jobs, which often means working in the nights and the weekends. Um, low paid service jobs uh, and there of course having uh, the family support is, is very important uh, or having the care support um, and when we looked at the um, qualitative um, interviews when we did interviews with um, young adults uh, who have experienced labor market um, exclusion being uh, having been unemployed uh, uh, they often pointed out, and they having young children pointed out that they could not return, for example, to the labor market because in the place where they lived, there was no uh, childcare, which was too far. Or then the other cases when they're living, for example, with the grandparents um, uh, who were taking care of the children so they could uh, go to work. Um, so when we look at the, at the gender divide, in general, in terms of the early career, like for example, looking at unemployment rates or need rates, then then we don't see a clear gender difference. But when we go into, for example, care aspects, we can see very clear um, gender tracks there that the men's and women's um, career prospects and situations are very different once the care um, uh, need enters uh, to the pictures. To the picture, and of course. Um, uh, now, in another um, project that we're having on the gender pay gap, uh, we can see that having uh, uh, more children, meaning being out more in the, from the labor market, also results in lower uh, pay, especially for women. And, uh, and the gender pay gap increases uh, dramatically, especially um, in the 30s, um, when probably women are already returning to, to the labor market or still out of labor market to the care responsibility. And, and as we could see, the men's um, labor market situation, or care, uh, labor market situation, is not so much affected by the by the child care. Um, just uh, shortly, um, not to abuse the time uh, too much, um, we also looked at um, one paper where we wanted to look at the consequences of the early career exclusion. Um, um, that uh, so far, we have been mostly talking about. Uh, what is characteristic to young people when it comes to labor market exclusion, which groups are more vulnerable and um, more affected uh, by this. But we also wanted to look at what is the effect of experiencing early labor market exclusion on the, on the car career perspectives. And uh, here we um, used um, uh, registry data or administrative data uh, where we looked at the uh, uh, young adults um, 
during five periods, uh, five year period, uh, and looking how it evolved their income, uh, the income, and also uh, calculating the relative pover relative poverty risk. And related to the experiencing unemployment in the first year after leaving the school. So we're looking at the young adults who left the school and what happened during the first year in terms of the labor market exclusion and what was the effect in the in the midterm uh, perspective, which is you know, five years to their incomes and, and poverty. And we can see that uh, those who experienced um, uh, some type of uh, a bit of or who experienced unemployment um, during the first year of uh, labor market entry uh, experienced uh, five years later higher poverty risk, uh, but and also lower salaries. And uh, and the real divide is actually maybe not so much that they experienced a little bit of unemployment, but uh, long-term unemployment. So when we split the unemployment experience up um, during the first year, you can see that when they experienced some unemployment, uh, then the poverty risk uh, was not significantly higher five years later, but when the, when the unemployment experience during the first year was longer than six months, uh, the, the poverty risk went also up uh, considerably um, and this even when we control for uh, for the gender education uh, also uh, school uh, language and grades um, in this data set we didn't have any uh, information about the uh, labor market positions uh, uh, where in the labor market they were working so we hope that the income catches or captures a little bit of the labor market position um, but what we also see that the early unemployment scar uh, seems to be mediated through the later work um, uh, pathway, meaning that it's not only important what happens during the first year, but what happens to the, in the first year often has consequences what happens the next year. So those who are experiencing unemployment during the first year are more likely to experience it also throughout those five years. And once we control uh, for the unemployment during the five years, uh, so the accumulated unemployment experience within the first five years of career, we can see that the, the, the unemployment experience during the first year is not so important anymore. Uh, so the, it really is more important what happens during the, the first five years when it comes to the poverty and when it comes also to the income where, the, where actually the first six uh, months or for having experienced any kind of unemployment uh, during the first year is already important um, and reducing significantly the, the earnings five years later. Um, so what is maybe important uh, takeaway message from here is that uh, uh, the, the young people, um, the, maybe they, the early uh, career uh, scar is maybe not so strong, but it becomes very strong uh, when this unemployment experience becomes repeated. And of course, as we could also see earlier, there are risk groups uh, very more likely to experience uh, higher, um, uh, more likely unemployment, and also that the unemployment uh, becomes uh, long term, which is uh, lower educated um, uh, people. We can also see that the clear. Of course, uh, long uh, career breaks uh, also in care of in case of women. Um, so um, we also wanted to look at the, whether the education makes a difference here. Uh, we know that higher education, uh, higher educated young adults are more successful in avoiding unemployment, uh, but uh, we could not see um, any clear interaction with uh, with the unemployment experience. So meaning that uh, it did not really matter in what uh, education level, having what education level, whether you experience unemployment or not. So it didn't make really much difference for different level of education. Um, but for the income, we saw a little bit of a difference, especially with the master degree. And uh, those were of the women there. So. Uh, those women who left the education to the master degree probably 
certain disciplines. Uh, and when they didn't manage to establish in the labor market early, like well, and they experienced unemployment, so this already showed up uh, in their earnings later. Um, so, um, in one hand, maybe we can think that maybe this unemployment is not so stigmatizing uh, um, in, the, uh, in the eyes of the employers, so the young people are able to, to recover um, this uh, first uh, um, labor market exclusion later in the earnings and labor market position. But, uh, but we can still then in long term, it can leave scars, especially when they when they are uh, experiencing labor market insecurity for longer periods. Um, so um, I think my time is up and my, uh, the main thing that I wanted to talk about is also um, I made it to my end. So um, maybe you have some questions or comments, uh, so I'm happy to answer them. So thank you very much, Godfrey. And uh, now it's uh, the time for questions and comments. And actually we have already the first question on the chat by Tony. Kurnjavan, uh, sorry if the pronunciation wasn't correct. Uh, but the question is as follows. Uh, so the question, what is the novelty? of your work? What are the implications of your work uh, on the national policy concerning the issues? I mean, labor market and education and, and, and so on. So this was the question. So what is the novelty and what is the contribution uh, on, on the relevant policies? Um, this comes now uh, to the specific the youth labor market, uh, I expect, um, because I, uh, or in general. Um, uh, so I take it now that the, the question is about uh, studying the young, young people. So um, as I said already, uh, what has not been looked so much and we still very, un, un, very little studied is the, the, the care um, part in the early career formation. Um, we have a very high gender gap in Estonia and, and it's still not so clear or is something somebody really doesn't want to talk about so much, uh, how these um, uh, care arrangements um, affect men's and women's careers and how important they are and that they're important. Um, so this is really the question to open. Well, this is really the issue to open up this uh, defect of care in general. Um, I think I stopped sharing. And um, uh, and then, of course, uh, what we have been looking at maybe has been not looked so much is to using more this longitudinal data to to work with the registry data. Um, uh, of course, my big dream uh, is still to have a good uh, longitudinal study or survey in Estonia. We all uh, would like to have it and, and looking forward to it. Um, and we don't have, so we have, and I have tried to use more uh, the public administrative data. So um, data what I presented here. Um, and now I know that there's already more uh, information coming from registers about the employment uh, situation or like the occupations, for example, which can be added and, and then you want to look uh, more about the, it's not only important whether you are in the labor market or out of in the labor market, but also where you are in the labor market. So it becomes the issues of overqualification and uh, wage poverty. Uh, so um, those are, in a sense, uh, maybe new topics that I've been bringing in uh, last years and where I would like to um, keep working on. And the implications on the on the policy. Um, well, we have been working uh, with the ministries together, and uh, for example, the the Except project, which was led by Marge on this international project, there was uh, quite clear uh, policy recommendations. Uh, what can be used? Um, for the in terms of the youth um, improving the youth labor market situation, I mean, when we look at the 
regulations, as I said, there is little very youth targeted policies um, um, in Estonia, and uh, there are some employment uh, or activation policies um, and active labor market policies where the youth are more, more likely to participate. So, um, um, I mean, some recommendations can come from this side, but I think uh, what is important is to bring up, um, the, of, the, of course, the care issue, and what already has been studied, of course, is what we know that the boys and girls choose different um, educational tracks, and this has implications later on the career uh, perspective. So I think this is uh, more the, the issue where where I'm, I am on now and what I want to keep working on. Okay, thank you very much. But put it very briefly. So how your work did add any value to the existing knowledge on the subject? Put it very briefly. What is your message? Um, but you mean the, all the, my work on the, on the yeah. youth? Um, yeah, mostly. Yeah. Because this was just the one selection of the, of mm -hmm. the work that I've been doing. So this is not the only thing mm -hmm. that I've been doing. So um, um, I think what, is, what has added, uh, what was not there before, as I said, is the career, uh, the, mm -hmm. the care aspect which is uh, important and studied and, and still very important and has very long-term uh, uh, consequences. Uh, and uh, we, as we, for example, in, we observe in the gender pay gap. So it starts in the beginning of the careers. And, and the other is, um, um, I said also to, to, to track more better the, the, the early careers, the scars that, uh, that we always think that the young people when we look at the European comparison, they are doing relatively well. The labor market is flexible. They are able to enter any kind of jobs that they want. Uh, we already knew that there is education differences. There is, uh, um, there is uh, uh, ethnicity differences, um, uh, but we can see already maybe there is also start becoming more differences within, for example, higher education. So, and those are things uh, which, which are coming up and in the, in the backdrop of general um, uh, increase of education inequalities, I think it starts showing off more also in the, in the labor market and this we could see already in this data. Okay. It was not very you. short, but... <laughs> okay, anyway, we, we got the point. Uh, now, first I give the word to the experts. So, Sirpa and David, you have maybe something to ask about the lecture. Mm -hmm. I could uh, start by um, mm -hmm. asking about um, um, if you could el elaborate uh, the class perspective a little bit on the, uh, the uh, Estonian labor market. I, I think I, I did get some idea about the education system, but I, I, I would be interested to hear more and, and whether you think that uh, class as a perspective or perhaps as a part of the intersectional framework would be relevant for your work. Mm. And Katri, sorry, please. The connection was a bit bad, try but to also about the, please also about the try class. To be. Sorry. Sorry. The yeah, connection okay. was a bit bad and I, I just to be sure that you asked about the social origin effect or? So, yes, yeah, so, so, mm -hmm. social class uh, as a sort of dynamic also, I think that is shaped by educational system and and, and, uh, and uh, perhaps uh, might have slightly different dynamics in the in education and in the labor market uh, according to your what your presentation what you presented but yes yeah i mean there's of course the effect of origin we can see more in the in the education uh, field um, and uh, uh, i think there's a lot of fun good work by my colleagues uh, for example, Elusar and who have shown like the reproduction of uh, social class origin over the generations. Um, and uh, also the studies have shown uh, that increasing inequality, for example, access to uh, university. Um, uh, so the, the origin effect starts coming up, I think, stronger. And I see that especially in the beginning of the 90s, there was so much turbulence in the labor market and, and was much more flexible and, and young people were, were always uh, 
in the preference situation, especially compared to, to older uh, people. And then they had much easier to, to make it to the very high um, position very fast, but this is uh, fading away, this effect. So these good positions move with these people who came there and they're getting older. So younger people, I think, still um, have some advantage when entering the labor market. We can see, for example, when we study also this, um, when we study the companies uh, on the gender pay gap, there's still an issue that uh, people who are in the, in the company experience that when young people come, they ask for higher salary than those who, who are in the company have been experienced and they get it. So there is still kind of that, but um, I think there is still very strong divide between the educated and, and the high educated and low educated people. So this difference, I think, because becomes stronger, but I think, and then of course, who gets the higher education is already very much social origin related and we can see the, Despite the, um, um, our education system, which I think is still able to, especially the basic education, is able to reduce the, the origin effect. You know, we have the comprehensive school and we don't have early tracking. Uh, and usually when we look at the PISA studies, um, they say the effect of origin is relatively low, but it comes up later. So, um, and, and we don't, of course, much what happens in high school and after high school. And this is one thing what I would like to study. And now the PISA is related to, we can connect it to the registers and to see where those people end up. And, and I think there is the registration mm -hmm. data is, has uh, potential, especially when we don't have the, the longitudinal data. And I think this is something to study because I think up to basic education, things are kind of fine. Of course, there are differences. Uh, um, but um, but something happens in high school and later in the in the, in okay. the university. Thank you very much. Any other questions by the experts, David, for example? Um, good. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, mm -hmm. I apologize for arriving late today. You know, I you know I, I will watch the recording later and I look forward to that. Um, but again, I didn't hear enough of the talk to really ask a question right now. I'm, I will look forward to hearing it later, but mm -hmm. you know, so I guess okay. I really have no questions I want to ask right now. Okay, thank you very much. We have something like three minutes left. So one more question, please. Okay. Sirpa, I think Sirpa again. had a question, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. in case mm -hmm. it's possible to answer that in, in short mm -hmm. time. I was interested in how the transnational dynamics, how you uh, are able to, to, to capture the fact that the Estonian labor market is so open and, and people move back and forth transnationally, whether your data is able to cap capture that uh, mm -hmm. uh, openness of the... And keep market. your keep your answer very short. Yeah. Um, I think especially it comes registered data right now is difficult. They they disappear. I mean maybe we are able at one point some registers because we know already where they go. Many people go to Finland, for example. So there is maybe a long term perspective. There is a chance to get this registered. I think it's more likely to get from the survey data to get those people maybe back later. But once they're gone, they're gone. So so. We, I had one paper on the on the youth, uh, like the ethnicity divide when people after high school when they want to go to abroad, and of course the the young uh, Russians they are much like, likely to go, and those people are gone in a sense we don't never get them back uh, later. Okay, thank you very and much. It's difficult to study those uh, transitions and to to get the real effect actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, thank you very much and uh, thank you for attending the lecture.